Good evening, my friends, and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself, Amata, where as always, I am here with the latest and greatest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So we have quite a bit through to get through today. And the first thing we're actually going to talk about is yet more on the GTX 1660. Now, both myself and Paul have been discussing this particular GPU a fair bit over the last couple of weeks as we have seen several rumours, leaks and speculation going around the interwebs and the most consistent thing that we've naturally heard is that the card is going to be a Turing card but it is not going to have any ray tracing cores and a recent leaked image does seem to confirm this assuming you believe in its legitimacy. But what we have here is a reference design 1660 along with the branding GTX Touring. So obviously it's still showing that it's Touring, but it says GTX, not RTX, which obviously says, hey, this does not have ray tracing. And we are expecting to see as well a price point of roughly 200 and, sorry, 250 US dollars to 350 US dollars. So whether or not you want to put any stock in this particular leak is down to you, but of course it does pretty much line up with the previous rumours that we have heard surrounding this card, and to be honest it would make sense for them to have a cut down Turing card without the ray tracing cores that is sort of more towards the low end. And of course we're expecting to see two SKUs come to the market for this one, the 1660 Tie and 1660. Just yesterday I discussed in a video, which of course will be linked in the description below this video, some leaked specifications regarding the clock speeds and the memory clock for these GPUs. But we have more news to get through of course and our next thing on our itinerary is actually regarding Intel's 10nm Ice Lake. Now unfortunately this is potentially not brilliant news, I just want to say that before I go any further this is a rumour thanks to the sources of Kit Guru. so of course I will include a link to their article in the description below this video but I just want to stress that this is not confirmed, that's all I'm saying here. So the, the long and tired saga of 10NM has been going on for what feels like a human lifetime because 10NM has been delayed and delayed and delayed and it's kind of becoming a bit of a meme at this point that 10NM was never going to come out. That even did float around as a rumour for a while before Intel said no, we are still releasing it. And of course at CES they did finally demonstrate their first 10NM processor for desktops which of course is Ice Lake. And we are expecting to see this at the end of 2019 after this long string of delays. But, at least according to what Kit Guru sources have been telling them, there might be yet more getting in the way of this particular CPU coming out onto the market, as industry rumours are saying that apparently Intel are having some troubles implementing PCIe 4.0 into the chipset, or PCIe 4.0 support, should I say. Unfortunately, the sources of KitGuru didn't really have any more specifics to offer on this particular topic. They just said that Intel are struggling to upgrade to PCIe 4.0. And there are some concerns that this will end up causing yet more delays for the launch of 10NM. Now, it is entirely possible that these rumours are true, that they are currently having some problems with the implementation of PCIe 4, but it might not necessarily cause delays. It is entirely possible that after how many times we've seen this particular chip delayed, Intel have set this rather sort of wide release date of holiday 2019 to give them a bit of breathing room just in case any last minute snags pop up. We are of course only in January even if we are almost at the end of January somehow. Feels like it was only New Year's just the other day but that's a completely different topic entirely and plenty can change over the course of a year so don't ring the doom bells just yet but it's not exactly brilliant that we're having these concerns again with this particular CPU. So I just hope that we don't see another delay for Ice Lake because that would that wouldn't even be comical anymore. It's like it stopped being funny ages ago. <laughs> it's just yeah, let's let's hope not. Let's just put it that way. Of course, this is all a rumor. It could be based on outdated outdated information, incorrect information. It could be right on the money, or we could see that these issues are present but they don't actually affect the launch of Ice Lake, all equally possible at the moment. So let's keep our eyes peeled for more rumours and leaks on this one, shall we? 
But speaking of CPUs, we actually have something regarding AMD. Sadly, no, it's not more rumours about the new Ryzen or anything like that, although of course that is naturally doing rather well for itself, that being Ryzen specifically, not the new ones, obviously. This is actually about Bulldozer. Remember that? I'm sure you're trying to not remember it because, or... Uh, let's just not. Anyway, the shadow of Bulldozer still looms long and large and potentially could cost AMD a whole lot of money as a district judge in California has granted a motion for a class action lawsuit and the legal case is going to be probably in motion later on this year. Now, if you maybe have heard rumblings of this previously, it's because it actually has actually been in the works for a while. Sometimes legal proceedings take a long, long time as the class action lawsuit actually began back in November of 2015, so quite some time ago, and it was actually filed regarding the claims of AMD quote-unquote misrepresenting the number of cores in the 8-core FX processors of Bulldozer and pile driver generations. Now I'm sure you guys remember the issues with the Bulldozer architecture which bottlenecks performance and essentially what the lawsuit is arguing here is that these people buying the processor thought they were getting a core, sorry, a processor with eight independent cores, not the shared bulldozer architecture, which again resulted in those bottleneck performance issues. Now, AMD, of course, have tried to argue against the class action lawsuit before ever got this far, basically saying that. There is no common understanding of the term core, so it could not be misrepresented. And there was a sort of case made by AMD in the case which says, quote, a significant majority in core in ways that are fully consistent with AMD's chips. But the judge naturally disagreed. Obviously, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And they have called AMD's challenges to the class action lawsuit, quote unquote, not persuasive and he has obviously allowed it to go ahead. So essentially what the two plaintiffs are actually arguing here is that when they saw the bulldozer parts being advertised on AMD, they were referenced as, quote, the first native eight core desktop processor, and so purchased a pair of FX 9590 processors for 300 bucks. And the second plaintiff purchased 8350 based on the, quote, industry's only native 8-core desktop, desktop processor for unmatched multitasking and pure core performance with bulldozer architecture messaging. So essentially, they feel that they were the product was misrepresented to them, that they were slightly misled into purchasing based on that messaging. So what are they actually asking for, I hear you ask, because that is obviously naturally important. They are seeking damages in line with the difference in cost between a 4-core and an 8-core, and obviously they're potentially could be hundreds of thousands of people potentially, potentially, excuse me, affected by this case. And for those of you wondering how they are actually defining the people who could fall under the umbrella of the results of this case, they are as, quote, all individuals who purchase one or more of the following AMD chips, either while residing in California or after visiting the AMD.com website, FX8120, FX8150, FX8320, FX8350, FX8370, FX9370 and FX9590. So for those of you who perhaps missed the whole ball, there's a kerfuffle and might be wondering, okay, how were they misled into thinking this was an 8-core processor when it wasn't. Well, let me give you a bit of a backstory, as Bulldozer did have a bit of an unconventional design. Um, it basically, its 8 cores were arranged in four sets of two cores each, which were called modules. Each one had its own independent integer unit and L1 data cache, and the two cores shared a majority of components, such as branch predictor, front end, the L1 and L2 cache, and most importantly, an FPU. And what we actually, actually saw was a lot of systems had to be tweaked, that being operating systems, on how to properly address a bulldozer processor just due to this rather unconventional design. Initially, the schedulers were treating bulldozer cores as fully independent, but unfortunately, there were some issues with performance bottlenecks with multi threaded applications. And eventually, we did see, long story short, updates to various OSs to treat each module as a core and each core as an SMT unit. So, what does this actually mean? I hear you ask. Well, in the eyes of Windows 10, just to give you a bit of an example, the FX8350 is four cores, eight threads. So you kind of start to see the angle from which the plaintiffs are actually presenting this class action lawsuit. But naturally, AMD are just going to fight this. 
quite hard. I have an army of lawyers, I'm sure. So despite the fact this has gone through and they will be facing this class action lawsuit, I would fully expect to still go on for quite some time and AMD have actually issued a bit of a statement basically saying quote the class certification motion does not address the underlying merits of the plaintiff's claims and we intend to defend ourselves vigorously that was in a statement to the register which of course would be linked in the description below this video as that is the very source for this article so this could potentially be messy for AMD um, even if it doesn't obviously go ahead and the plaintiff's don't win is obviously going to be expensive for them to defend themselves against the claims and obviously if it does go through and the, the plaintiffs do win lord knows the bill that it's going to be costing them but we are getting way way ahead of ourselves it took this long just to get the class action lawsuit actually approved by a judge so who knows how long it's going to be before we get any inkling of a resolution on this one. But let's finish up on a bit of a better note, shall we, as we have some interesting rumours regarding the next generation Xbox. Now you may or may not have actually seen the rumours circulating recently regarding the next generation Xbox console, which of course is at the moment is being called Xbox Scarlet. And this was a post on Imja, which detailed a lot of things, including Microsoft's plans for the next console generation, because of course there's been several comments from Phil Spencer as well that we're going to be seeing multiple devices and blah de, blah de, blah and now we have further updates to this as a verified Resetera forums member by the name of HMQQ talked more about the rumour and confirmed that some of the things in the previous rumour were true but of course you'll have to take his word for it that he knows what he's talking about so treat this all as a rumour unconfirmed in giant flaming letters so he says about the Reddit leak, the hardware is partially true, storage is true, ray tracing is true, Lockhart is not a streaming Xbox, S AMD SoC codename is Anubis, check AMD's plan, MSAI is not part of the hardware, in other words, never heard of TPU or ASIC like it, like it. how to implement ray tracing, see GDC 2019, why they make a decision like Lockhart, see GDC 2019, why are there still no dev kits? after GDC 2019. So in case you missed some of what I was referring to there, let's discuss the original specs that we did see circulating. So Xbox streaming, the Lockhart one that he was talking about there, the original post claimed that it was going to be $249. It's going to be a custom 8-core 16-thread Zen 2 CPU with a Navi GPU inside at 4 teraflops, 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and then we have a 1 terabyte NVMe SSD at 1 gigabyte second, and then DirectX ray tracing and MSAI. Now we also see Nick's Xbox X codenamed Anaconda. Now that name, if you've been paying attention to the Xbox leaks, we have definitely heard before. And the specs for this one, at least according to the original post, are 8 cores at 16 the threads Zen 2, Navi at 12 teraflops, 16 gigs of GDDR6, and then again the ray tracing and MSAI. So again, hardware is true, storage is true, ray tracing is true, Lockhart isn't the streaming Xbox, the codename is Anubis for the Xbox SoC, and then MSAI apparently is not part of the hardware. So basically what he's saying is that a lot of what the original post has said is true, but not all events. Now, as I said, the identity of this person was verified by Resetera, but despite that, we obviously have to take everything here with a pinch of salt until official confirmation comes in. Now, they mentioned GDC there multiple times, which takes place in March of this year. So it's not going to be too terribly long until we see how rights they end up being of course if they are actually going to be correct here we'll we'll see ray tracing at gdc we'll see lockhart or at least something like it at gdc and we'll also see something regarding the dev kit and potentially early specs as well at gdc 2019 so basically we have to wait till march and then we'll know how true or false these rumors actually are ray tracing on an xbox it depends how it's implemented, of course, but we have obviously seen with touring just how demanding ray tracing is on performance. And I really do want to see a push towards 60 FPS on console, or at least the option for it, like we've seen with the Pro and the Xbox One X, where some games have the option to be like, hey, you can play in 4K, or you can play in like a you know, 1440p or 1080p or whatever, but you can have an unlocked frame rate. I want to see more of that personally. Ray tracing is obviously a really interesting 
really gorgeous technology, but it's still in its infancy. So I'm not saying because well, I don't know what they're doing, because obviously they do. But I would be a bit concerned about the performance impact that I would have, whether or not it would be optional how many games would actually implement it, that sort of thing. But let's not go too hit up on that because it could be incorrect information, it could be false information, or it could be 100% true. We're going to have to just wait and see because even if we do see some of these things at GDC, we do not necessarily going to get 110% confirmation of what Scarlet or Anaconda or Anubis or whatever it ends up being called actually is or are. So... Let the speculation commence on that one, guys. Do you think we're going to be seeing ray tracing on the Xbox? Let me know your thoughts. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.